Hello all. So today we have a chance to talk about the so-called UAM Corpus tool. Actually, this tool comprises a set of different devices uh, which allow its users to do the linguistic annotations of text. And what is interesting about this application is the fact that uh, linguistic annotations can be done here either manually or semi-automatically. And furthermore, the application allows searching your text for words or for some particular features, for example, passive constructions or uh, POS and so on. And it also provides statistical analysis of your data. So that's why in reality, this program seems to have different functionalities. Uh, and we are going to discuss at least some of them uh, in this video. So as the developer of this program, his name is Mick O'Donnell, uh, as he describes the main audience of this tool. Uh, these are usually the users who may have not sufficient programming knowledge, but who have the necessary uh, basic knowledge of linguistics or especially computational linguistics and then they don't need to spend time on learning how to use the system but they can rather spend more time on annotating the text which they want to use for their corpora and for their corpus based studies. Uh, so as soon as we download this program from the internet, I will put the link to the related website to the post where I'm going to upload this video. This icon appears on the desktop, so we can just click it and then we will see this window. So as we can see in the lower part of this window, there are several options what we can do in this program. So mostly we will either open one of the projects which we have already worked on in this program, uh, or we will just start a totally new project. So now for the sake of walking through the program, we will better choose this one, start new project. So then we need to give a name for it. For example, let's take uh, the name Corpus Analysis. So then next, uh, then we choose the location of the program in the computer system. And if everything is OK, next. And finally, finalize. Uh, so after that, we just use this button, Extend Corpus. Uh, it lets us add the files to the corpus. Uh, so for example, in this case, uh, we can choose also either a text file or a subcorpus, which consists of several folders. And uh, automatically, the name which is given to the subcorpus, which we are going to check in the program, is text, but we can always change it if we need it. But now leave, let's leave it as it is. So then after that, we choose the necessary file. So for example, let's take this one, subcorpus. I put there just some information from the website where this program is located. But again, this can be a whole folder or a series of text files. But it's also important to mention here that the program now recognizes only TXT files. So that's why if we want to upload some Microsoft Word file, we still need to save it in this TXT plain format. Or for example, if it's done in some other programs, we can copy the content of the files into the notepad and then uh, to save it in this TXT format and upload it into the system of this application. So then everything is okay about this. We just click next and finalize. So now we can see the name of this file in the lower part of the screen. And then uh, as soon as we are sure that we want to analyze this file, or if we have several files, then all the files which are here, we use this button, Incorporate All. So then this window appears, uh, and here we can edit the program uh, and the file itself. For example, first of all, of course, we need to make sure that the language is correct. Uh, so in this case, of course, we will leave English. But what is important in terms of languages is the fact that although there are many options of the languages. In reality, uh, all these functionalities which exist in the program, they work mostly for English data. So for all the other languages which are in the system, only some options are available now. Then we can also change encoding, that is a writing system of that language. But here, of course, we will leave this one, which is uh, relevant to English and to other European languages with the Roman alphabet. And if we need to change the font, we can also do it here, uh, for example, like this. Uh, so then as soon as we are ready with editing the metadata, uh, we click OK. 
So and, uh, now we can just click done. So then uh, the name of this file it appears here in the main part of the screen. Uh, there is also option uh, which is called action. So we can edit uh, the text again if we need it. So we can change some metadata related to the file. And what is also important that we can see the basic text statistics, for example, the number of words or sentences in the text, uh, the level of its complexity or lexical density and so on. So then uh, as soon as we are ready to come to annotating uh, the chosen files, we use this option layers. So we can add uh, different layers as many as we need. And here we will see that there are many schemes, many options which are available in the program. So let's choose the name layer one. Actually, of course, when uh, working with the valid corpus, uh, it's better maybe to give some more significant names to the layers. For example, if we want to search for some particular grammar constructions uh, like passives, it would be logical to call the related layer passives, or for example, POS and so on. But now, just for the sake of our convenience of getting around the program, let's just give these ordinal numbers, for example, this one layer one. So then continue, as you can see, there are two main options, either automatic annotation or manual annotation. Let's choose automatic annotation first. So we can also select either grammatical structure, parts of speech, POS. So let's take POS and also three main systems, which can be used for this. So let's use this Stanford extended, for example, create layer. So now we can see the scheme. And if we need to edit anything here, we can first of all choose the features. Uh, I think we will still leave tokens here because it seems to be more important for many corpus-based analysis than some other options which are offered here. We can also regulate the depth, uh, for example, yeah, or the degree of zooming. For example, well, it can be just 10, but let's leave 100. And some other options, for example, uh, using glosses or saving the scheme as a PDF or HTML file and so on. Uh, so as we can see, it shows the scheme itself. And if we have some questions about, for example, uh, the words, or if we want to leave some comments, so we can just remain feature or delete feature, uh, clicking on the necessary feature and uh, choosing one of the options in this video. And also we can add some comment, uh, for example, um, important if something seems to be more essential uh, for one's research. Okay, so then we can see this comment here. So as soon as we are ready with editing the scheme, we can just close it and then we can add some other layer depending on our purposes. So let's put here layer two. Continue. And then now for diversity, let's choose manual annotation. So there are also different options here. For example, we can design a really new scheme or we can use the built-in scheme or reuse the scheme which uh, already exists, but maybe edit it and make some changes there. So I think that these last two options, they maybe are more applicable for most of us because we don't have maybe so much experience in designing our own schemes yet. For example, let's choose this one. So here there are also several options. So we can uh, take, for example, maybe a close grammar. Uh, it seems to be clearer to what we usually do with corpus. Uh, so then uh, create layer. So then we can see layer two, and again, we can also edit the scheme. Uh, and we can see that in this case, the scheme is different because the layer itself, the purpose of the notation is different in this case compared to the previous one. So after that, we can return to the main screen of the program, that is to the option files. So we can see the chosen layers here, and we can also click uh, on each of them. So we can see that it may take some time to run the tagger, but then very soon after that, we can see the annotation itself. Uh, so we can always click uh, on some certain elements of it. And we can see, for example, lemma. Yes, so like uh, the main initial form of the related word. Uh, for example, like this tool instead of tools and so on. And also it shows some characteristics uh, of those chosen elements, for example, their parts of speech in this case, so their forms, plural, singular, and so on. And if we need it, we can leave some comments related to the chosen element. So for example, uh, 
look at it later uh, if we want to pay more attention to something um, then we can leave this one so that's why now it will be marked with this but then as soon as we go to another element it disappears but then it appears again if we return to the same element and we can save this to be able to open this annotation later as well when we may need it so then the same about the second one so but here we can see that it's another kind of annotation uh, so it analyzes uh, the uh, clause types so we can mark the necessary part of it the necessary segment and then we will see some characteristics of it uh, so for example it's, there are relational existential clauses and so on uh, yeah here it is and we can also leave some comment here for example uh, interesting if we found something unusual uh, in this part of the file so then uh, we can always see this comment when we uh, click on this selected part of the file so also save codings later we can return to this annotation and to see all our comments changes and so on so what is also interesting about this program is the fact that we can uh, add some rules uh, so for example we can search for particular segments create new segments delete some segments and so on uh, but especially maybe to assign some segments a particular feature so let's choose this one and we can also uh, for example concentrate on tokens or some other things like for example the contractions and or or some certain parts of the segment but i think token is something more applicable in most situations uh, when we use corpus based analysis so let's choose this save so then we can see the rule and we can use the option find and then we can see the related examples from the file which we uploaded here and if uh, the researcher thinks that the program is wrong about some of the choices you can always uncheck that option and then it won't be saved in this list or we can check it back if then we decide that it's still important or that it's still correct uh, and then it can be possible to add different rules or to delete them and so on and as i mentioned earlier the program allows us to use some statistics so it can be general statistics uh, in this case it shows just the number of words or tokens or segments and so on or we can use the, uh, a more uh, profound and more advanced kind of statistics this feature coding so then it shows some percentage so that's why it's more related to frequency which is usually investigated in corpus based researchers and there are also some options about wordings uh, about limitized wordings so it's possible to choose many of them uh, when necessary and also like for example uh, normalized frequency per 1000 tokens uh, or just uh, percent of all instances which is maybe more usual and so on and there are also some other options in the program for example if we want to use uh, some uh, coding options search options or pass and tagging options so mostly of course we can choose what is already set in the program or also we can put here some other applications so just uh, in this case we can choose uh, for instance um, the, uh, some other programs like let's take tag end uh, which we already discussed and then save options so that's why now this tag end is also used as a tree tagger by the program so and finally it's necessary to mention that in case uh, the user has some questions or some difficulties with using the program it's always possible to come to this option help and uh, to choose different uh, topics different research needs and the questions which he or she may have at the moment and then uh, the program will give some information about all of them and uh, it's nice that this program can be easily downloaded and uh, it can be downloaded for free so and then it's always possible to return to some previous projects or to different projects uh, to start new projects and so on so this is the website of this program www.linguisticsweb.org i will put this link into the related post and here it's possible also to see some tutorials some screenshots of these and some other functions which the program provides so that's why i would say that all these guidelines they're quite illustrative and it's not very difficult to follow them 
and also at the very end uh, of the main page of this website it's possible to find uh, a few videos in English because most of them are in Italian since this program was developed in Italy and different specific functionalities for some particular purposes so it's not